Zine friends and welcome back to our channel. Today we are doing Ride or Abide. We talk about uh, things that we have been liking or doing this week. Now it's been kind of a crazy week this week, not only with work and whatnot, but also because of the elections. But I think we're both mm -hmm. kind of relieved right now about how everything <laughs> has turned out. Uh, yep. Just this morning I was kind of uh, going through Instagram and seeing just all the posts rather emotionally talking about what this election means to them and and mm -hmm. how the results were yeah. so it kind of got me a little bit choked up this morning i'm not gonna lie oh well, that's good because like i haven't looked at instagram at all right now mm -hmm. i've been just looking at the associated press i've been looking at that and hurricane etta or yes which might tropical be storm etta. hitting us tomorrow we don't know <laughs> it's gonna be it's supposed to be hitting <clears throat> south florida and they've already released all the warnings there but the path then has it going back into the Gulf and turning around being like, Ooh, hey, Disney World, this is going to be fun. Well, that's kind of like where we uh, where we were from last week. But we're going to talk about the things that we did do and then some holidays that are coming up and things that we were kind of into this past week. So, books. Here we go, books. Well, I've kind of been catching up a little bit on some of them because I had that period where I didn't feel like reading as much. Um, so I have finished Across the Green Grass Fields by Shawnee McGuire. Uh, I'd say that's more of a four star for me. And then I also did Anxious People. Oh, that was so good. Such a good book. Five star out of me for that one. Mm -hmm. This week I, for some reason, just got this big like reading like grew and of the seven days I read six books which is crazy. Curvy Girls Can't Date Billionaires which is by Kelsey Steltling and this is the second book in the Curvy Girls Club series. The third one is already out which I think is Curvy Girls Can't Date Cowboys and I really enjoyed this book again. I gave it four stars. It's basically the story of uh, Jordan. She's more lower income uh, Latino girl and uh, she is trying really hard not to fall for this like tech uh, entrepreneur who works with his dad to create an app and kind of misjudges him as being someone who only cares about money blah 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 so it's kind of a predictable book but again it's just really good and and I like this series because each book is about one of the girls in the curvy girls club the next book is about ginger and then after that i think we're gonna have callie and zara i think is her name so those are the uh, those are the other three we saw but anyway they're they're very good all the same if you like um and young adult romantic books then this is definitely the book for you next i thought it was appropriate to read campaign widows this is by amy agresti i gave this book three stars honestly it is counterparts of people who are involved in campaigns whether they're running the campaign running for office themselves or maybe they're in charge of fundraising for the different campaigns these are either them or their counterparts which are called campaign widows because they're kind of left behind and this whole like thing happens mm -hmm. there are a lot of characters in this book i'm not gonna lie i had to make a list to keep them straight oh, and for me that just kind of like made it a little less enjoyable to read because i couldn't keep it straight and that's why i gave it three stars the next book i read is called a princess for christmas that's by jenny holiday um which i thought was funny because her name was holiday and it's a christmas book but basically she set out to write a hallmark uh movie type of book and she did it quite well of course there's a big theme about royals during the holidays so this is about a uh, princess who comes to speak at the un but has to go to get on a, a boat to like have go to a party and she her car breaks down the one that they've ordered for her so she ends up hailing a cab and the guy who drives the cab has his little sister in the car and he takes care of her has to drive her to the boat and in doing so they strike up a friendship so then after spending some time while she's in america he goes over to her country which is called eldovia which i thought was hysterical because i believe the country in uh, christmas prince on netflix it's called Aldovia with an A. <laughs> so I was like, that's fun. 
So then, of course, they strike up a romance, other things happen, etc., etc. I thought this was like a, a well written book. I thought it was adequate and I thought it was great for the season, so I gave it three stars. Leave the World Behind, and it's by Ruman Alam. I think I said that correctly. This is a book that a lot of people have been talking about. It's kind of this like weird disaster book. I listened to it on Libro, which, if you guys don't know about Libro, is really awesome because they su support your local bookstores. We got this book from Libro. Libro and it was uh, basically about this family who has come to this like rent a cabin Airbnb type situation for a week and then the owners of the cabin show up and they are like uh, well there's this disaster that happened in New York there's no Wi-Fi there's no way for you to get on your cell phone like all this stuff is like breaking down can we stay with you while this disaster is happening so they do and <laughs> Then weird things start happening, like, I don't know, loud noises, deer shows up in places it shouldn't show up. Like, really strange things, but things that, like, if you really thought about it, are indications of a, a large disaster. And throughout the book is peppered in the narrator's thoughts on things that are happening in other parts of the world where like a guy is trapped on a subway and dies etc but the whole book is kind of really weird like the ending I didn't even know that it really ended because it like ended and I went wait did my book cut off <laughs> did they just stop talking like is there a glitch in the app I don't know but then I went back and like did some research and no it really did end the way it ended <laughs> and I was sorely disappointed the whole thing was like they were just very apathetic to the disaster that was happening around them and all these strange things were happening and they would react and then they go back to like, I don't know. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I gave this book three stars. <laughs> I don't know what was going on at all. So the next book I read after that is called The Girls of Bracken Hill. This is by Kate Moretti and oh my gosh. Okay, so this book has been on my list to read for a while. Um, I got it ahead of time and then they also offered it as one of those like Amazon first reads that like they send you a bunch of books that are about to come out and, like you can pick one. So I was like, ooh, okay, good. I, I'm, I'm kind of excited for this. In a nutshell, these girls that live or, or reside or in or around Bracken Hill, this huge castle in this small town, disappear or die. And people start blaming the aunt who owns the castle but then she ends up dying in like a car wreck so her niece comes to the castle to try to figure out a what happened to the aunt did she die in a horrible accident did she commit suicide like what happened her uncle is in the house on life support because there's like cancer killing him her sister 17 years earlier disappeared no one could find her so as she's in this castle her dog finds bones on the castle grounds and she's like is it her sister and it turns out that it is not her sister it's somebody else so she starts having these realizations that she can't remember a lot of what happened when it comes to her sister's disappearance so she starts remembering these things and this book was like so interesting to me and it just was a fast read and even though the ending was a little little bit like almost open-ended but not quite it explained things but it was a little open-ended I give this book four stars. I thought it was great. It was a fun read. I, I, I figured out what happened like halfway through, but that didn't mean that I lost the enjoyment for the book because that's how well it was written. So definitely recommend if you want that one. And then the last one I read, which I actually just finished reading last night, was called The Last Resort by Susie Holiday. And yes, I read two books with people's of last names of Holiday. It's very much like that Bloomhouse movie Fantasy Island where okay. seven people come to an island they're supposed to have a, like a customized luxury experience and then one person goes missing and one person gets bitten by a snake and and things start happening but not like disastrous enough that you're like oh dear lord like everyone's dying like it's not that disastrous but it's also not that great <laughs> <laughs> and I think the biggest problem I had in this book is that the connections just weren't there. Like, I mean, this is going to be a, a huge spoiler alert, probably, but you never really find out why these people were chosen to come to this island. Like, entirely. Not all of them. And that kind of 
like was a big plot hole for me. There were many major plot holes in this book, like so much, so much. Um, so I don't really uh, know if if you really care about gaping plot holes, I, this book will probably frustrate you. But if you like books that just kind of like are an interesting read and kind of a little bit weird and dark, this will probably be a book that you could pick up. I gave it three stars. Okay. What are you reading this week, like in the coming week? Right now I am about halfway through The House in the Cerulean Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, I have also gotten a little bit into The Turn of the Key. And that is by Ruth Ware. By Ruth Ware, yeah. And I'm continuing to read I Am a Hero by Kengo Hanazawa. We already talked a little bit about that comic mm -hmm. book, yeah. but I still have the rest of that to go. Mm. So this week, well, at least the ones I'm starting with right now is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I just started reading that this morning and I'm in the middle of Red, White and Royal Blue. I can't remember who wrote it, but it'll be right here. Those two books I am reading as part of like a book club thing. I'm really excited. I got The Hunting Party from Book of the Month. So excited about that. Our movies and TV for the week. Um, I don't know about you, but we started pretty hardcore into the Christmas movies this week. Um, my husband and I watched one or two movies every night this week. And he's been writing reviews for those on the blog. So if you're interested in those, you can go. He's periodically putting them up. Um, but let's talk about some of the ones that we did watch. First, let's talk about the two movies that we watched on HBO Max. Marshall did not watch any of these movies. I worked. <laughs> he worked all week, but he's off this week. So maybe we'll get some in with him. Mm -hmm. So the first movie was Black Christmas. It has Imogene Poots in it. Uh, it is a Blumhouse movie. I was very disappointed in this movie, I have to say. I thought it was really sad that the women in this movie just did the exact opposite of what smart women should do. And now I remember, yes, I did watch this movie. Yeah. It, it kind of frustrated yeah, me. Yeah, it was, was, not, was not the best. So, yeah. no. The second movie we watched was Last Christmas. Um, these are both movies that came out last year, but we had not seen them, so we were, we were waiting till now to watch them. So this is a Paul Feig movie. If you don't know about Paul Feig, then you should follow him on Instagram because he's like always dresses really dapper and he makes these cocktails and, I, and it's just it's just so fascinating to watch his Instagram. So please follow him. It's fun. Um, but anyway, the writer of this movie is Emma Thompson. She also produced and is in this movie along with Amelia Clark, Henry Golding and Michelle Yeoh. Yao? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to say her name correctly. Henry Golding and Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> we're in Crazy Rich Asians together, which my husband was like, are they contractually obligated to be in this in movies together now? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but the thing about Last Christmas is that this girl had a surgery. She was ill. And ever since then, she's just kind of been living her life in this very carefree manner because she doesn't care about the things around her. She couch surfs. She doesn't really have a house. And then something happens that she kind of starts to see what she could be doing to help other people and, you know, maybe being better friends to the people who are helping her out, but also helping out a homeless shelter. And uh, there were a lot of really interesting things about this movie. My husband, though, caught the twist, like, so early on, it, like, astounded me because usually it's me. He catches the twist, but he was like, he knew what it was, like, right on. In the meantime, she described the movie to me, and I caught the twist in the middle of her telling me right. the story. Right, so... Like, yeah, it's, it's a cute movie, and yeah. I think, you know, if you like Love Actually or those kind of movies, you'll probably like this kind of movie as well. Yeah. Let's move on to Netflix. I'm not really going to talk about the movies that, we you know, we have watched previously. Uh, Christmas Chronicles we watched because the second one is coming out. Princess Switch we also watched because the second one is coming out. And then A Night Before Christmas because my husband had never seen it and it also we were on a Vanessa Hudgens kick at that point. So we ended up watching those. Um, if you're interested in those reviews of course they'll be on the blog. Um, but let's talk about Holiday which was a new movie that just came out this year with Emma Roberts, Luke Bracey, Jessica Capshaw, and Kristen Chenoweth. And Holiday is a story of a girl and a guy who basically decide that they are going to be each other's dates for every holiday in the year, in one calendar year, so that they don't have to deal with being single on the holidays or having their parents be like, why are you still single? You know, etc. 
So they do, um, and it's uh, kind of an interesting movie. It is very raunchy. It is raunchier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was funny, it, but, but if you don't like raunchy movies, this is not the movie for you. Do not. Just don't. Um, there were some things about this movie, though, that I was just like, uh, why? Why are we portraying people this way. Operation Christmas Drop also new to Netflix this year. Uh, this is a true story and honestly it was such it was such a good movie representation and it's about a military base in Guam that every Christmas partners with I think Japan and Australia to drop presents, supplies, necessities to like 55 islands um, in the area for Christmas, right? And a congresswoman has to shut down a base for reasons and sends her assistant down to the naval base to form a report to see whether or not this is a base that they are going to shut down. It was just so cute. It was a cute movie. So in, in this movie is Kat Graham. You may recognize her from Christmas Calendar either last year or the year before, also a Netflix movie and Alexander Ludwig, who was Kato in Hunger Games. So those two people are in this movie. I would definitely recommend checking it out. It is a really interesting story because it is true and it's something that they, I think they continue to do to this day. Mm -hmm. And the reasons why they're doing it are just really heartwarming and amazing, perfect for the season. Midnight at the Magnolia. Uh, it is more of a New Year's Eve movie, but it's definitely a holiday movie. And from the poster, which we'll put right here, the movie itself did not go the way the poster said that it was going to go. So if you look, this is very like 1920s kind of like formal art deco. I understand why they were going this way because the movie is really about them, these two radio hosts who have known each other since childhood. Their dads own the Magnolia, which is like a 1920s-ish jazz bar and they have to do a live radio show there uh, to have their significant others meet their parents because they haven't yet. And because of the fact that it's a 1920s-ish jazz bar, they decided to go with this Art Deco theme. I totally get it, but it is not indicative of the vibe you get from this movie. This movie is fun. It is the two main actors are not cheese. They are actually really good. And I really appreciated this movie a lot. I thought it was a good one. It wasn't like, you know, phenomenal, but it was definitely up there with movies that are feel good and like hearted and perfect for the holidays as well. So give that a check out. So my last movie we're gonna talk about is a Hallmark movie. And this is One Royal Holiday. And it is the story of a royal family, here we go again, who decides they are going to uh, try to make it to the airport to leave and can't because they're snowed in. So this girl they meet at a donut shop has uh, a bed and breakfast that's run by her family decides to let them come into their bed and breakfast and experience a small town Christmas. So nice. The interesting thing about this movie, probably the most interesting thing about this movie, is that they decided to cast the entire main character lineup with Broadway stars, which was great. So we have Aaron Tavit, you may recognize him from Les Mis, especially the movie version of Les Mis. Laura Osnes, who was Cinderella on Broadway. Tom McGowan, he was in a version of She Loves Me, if you want to mm -hmm. catch that on Broadway HD. I think it's still on there. Uh, Victoria Clark, she was in a movie called Cradle Will Rock, but she also got a Tony nomination, I think, for Light in the Piazza on Broadway, and also Crystal Joy Brown, who was in Motown the Musical. So, if that can tell you the amount of money that was put into this particular movie on Hallmark, that should explain everything. The acting was amazing for a Hallmark movie, yeah. and it was actually, like, it was just, it was so... I don't know, it was so nice. Even though it gave me intense Christmas Prince vibes, it was a good movie. <laughs> I saw just a few minutes of this, and I got no cheese right. from any of it. And the music is really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. Yes, if you have the opportunity uh, and the means to check out this Hallmark movie, I actually, I actually do recommend this one a lot. So that's pretty much what we watched. Um, we did start The Queen's Gambit 
last night. Um, we'll talk maybe more about that next week if we decide to finish it. Yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna give it a little bit more of a shot. Mm -hmm. um, we also watched the second episode of Mandalorian. We did. Mm hmm. And we are now up to date on the long way up. Mm hmm. That was a fun cliffhanger. Yeah, so we're waiting for one more. We'll talk about that as well when the season winds up. I'll talk to you about how with that went in a mm -hmm. So that is all of our television watching. All the media. I have been playing uh, Paper Mario Origami King recently. I got it for my birthday from Marshall and uh, I have been really enjoying it. The only thing that I haven't really been enjoying about it is I don't like the battles uh, because they're very repetitive and they also are also timed so I'm just it, I don't like things where I have to like sit there and be like, okay, okay, I gotta figure this out right now. I like to kind of take my time and figure out how to play things, which is why I like regular Mario in this game a lot better because there's no time limit. I can go explore things, hmm. but where when you get to the battles, it's very like stressful and I don't need that kind of stress in my life. <laughs> But I like the game a lot. I, I, I really do enjoy it. So if you're looking for a video game to pass the time, besides Animal Crossing, which of course is priority, um, she, she, she requires. She requires. Animal I Crossing. require Animal Crossing. I play it uh, a lot. <laughs> Not every day anymore, but a lot. I do. Holidays. So November, we are we are dealing with quite a few interesting ones. November twelfth is Hell Valley Lightning Day. Um, now, the Hill Valley has, is, one of its big landmarks is its uh, courthouse with a clock tower. And that clock tower was started at 8 p.m. September 5th in 1885. And the courthouse was finished alongside the Clayton Ravine mm -hmm. Bridge. Uh, and it stood for ages. On November 12th, 1955, however, the lightning rod became disconnected somehow. And when lightning struck from a huge storm, the gears fused at 10.04 p.m. And it's been like that ever since because the Hill Valley Preservation Society has been raising funds every year to keep it that way. And uh, because uh, it's a big day in the life of Hill Valley, the Hill Valley Mall is currently doing a display down inside the mall. Uh, and every hour on the hour, they have holographic lightning strikes. Uh, you'll find most of that display right next to Hydrators Unlimited. Uh, if you want to know more about the Hill Valley Lightning Strike, you can watch Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. On Friday, November 13th, we celebrate a woman chasing young men, mutilating them, and sending them to their final destiny. We are talking, of course, of Sadie Hawkins Day. Uh, Sadie Hawkins Day was started in the Little Abner comic strips uh, as a farmer was trying to get rid of his spinster daughter, Sadie, uh, and created a race and the guy who got caught by her had to marry her and that race continued in the town every year hmm. so women got this idea to have a dance and put nails in their shoes to hobble the men so that they could catch them easier that's kind of wow uh so if you uh want me to give you a pop culture reference for this I did find one in Perks of Being a Wallflower. They do talk about the Sadie Hawkins dance, so that is one to check out. But let's also talk about the fact that this year Sadie Hawkins falls on Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. which, as you know, also comes from a movie. <laughs> Where a woman mutilates young men and sends them to their final destiny. Spoilers. Um, but yes, mm -hmm. that is what it is. So happy Friday to very <laughs> violent uh, holidays. Okay, okay. How about a little bit happier, a little bit happier. On November 12th through the 16th, but mm. peaking on the 14th, is Diwali, which is also uh, brought into English language as Deep Valley. Um, it is a Hindu festival of lights, and it's celebrating the victory of light and knowledge and fertility over darkness and death because of um, the solstice and things becoming the darkest night of the year. Um, they will celebrate this by cleaning their house, going shopping on different days, and then on the big day, they'll have a big old party, they'll have lights all up and down the rivers and mm -hmm. on the houses, and that's where the name comes from because it means row of lights. 
Uh, you can actually uh, see a little bit more about this because it was popularized more in America by The Office. Which is, of course, my second favorite TV show, mm -hmm. well, well, comedy TV show of all time. Uh, and of course, they're, they have an entire Diwali single celebration and Michael decides he's going to sing a song that mm -hmm. is based off It Crazy Nights, but it's <laughs> themed to Diwali. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. <laughs> you can find that in the season three, episode number six, called Diwali. Like Kelly says about Diwali, um, it's basically awesome. <laughs> They've got lots of nice sweets. The day after that, it's all about eating. I'm not kidding. Yum. Our last thing is lifestyle items. So I have a couple things to talk about with that. This Burt Bees lip balm. This is the has flavor crystals and my uh. Scent is Tropical Pineapple. It's 100% natural, and I've been finding this to be really perfect this time of year so that my lips don't get dry. Anytime I wake up in the morning, I just put this on and I am good. This is definitely a great lip balm. Mm -hmm. You should try it because the flavor crystals are Flavorful. delicious. <laughs> yes. Next, I'm going to talk about two things I've been drinking uh, just because I didn't really go anywhere or do much this week besides obviously watch movies and read books. Uh, so this is the Tivana uh, tea. I have the Jade Citrus Mint. Um, the reason why I like this is because it's got a little bit of caffeine in it, but yet it's still uh, pepperminty. A lot of peppermint teas are herbal, so there isn't caffeine in it. But this one is, and I like this as a wake me up because it just kind of clears out my sinuses and helps me feel a little bit better. Um, it is a little pricey for tea in my opinion, but uh, if you get like a bulk pack of it. Um, there's also a couple other flavors you can get. It's more worth it there. So if you're looking for a tea to try, I definitely recommend this, especially if you want a caffeine. My next drink thing is from a brand called Noon. It's spelled N-U-U-N. It is a uh, like almost a sports drink company, but they have tablets in these little tubes. Uh, these are very low in sugar, which is why I got them. I needed to help with my electrolytes a little bit because I was starting to crash. And uh, I was drinking Gatorade, and because of the, the sucralose in that, I was just really, like, falling asleep after I drank Gatorade. It was bad. So I finally found this. They have a variety of different things, not just, like, for uh, replenishing your electrolytes, but also helping with your immunity and your energy and things like that. Um, so like I said, it's low in sugar, which is why I chose these. Um, the ingredient list is actually very nice because instead of bad uh, colors, like, you know, red, whatever, 75, I don't know what it is. Um, they use beets as a color oh. in this one. Um, and they use a stevia leaf extract in order to sweeten it. So this actually works really well. This particular one is fruit punch, but I have a pack that I got on Amazon that's like four different flavors and all of the ones I've tasted so far have been very good. So also, it's very travel size and compact. You can just drop this into your water bottle and it's great. I love it. If you're looking for something low sugar, check this out. You have nothing? Uh, I have nothing. This week, I, I spent pretty much the entire week working my head right off. He really has. Yeah. But this week you're off, so maybe you can discover some new things this week. Maybe we can. Mm -hmm. uh, I would really like to. So thank you so much for watching. We are sending you peace, hope, love, and fun. But until next time, stay zany. Bye-bye.